Hi, and uh, welcome back. So this is the first video in a sequence of videos about neural networks. So this video here is just intended as a small teaser or just an advertisement for what's to come in the following um, many videos. So neural networks, I guess, is the, the basics of deep learning. Right? And maybe you've already seen pictures like these, but neural networks are typically drawn, as we see in these pictures down here, uh, you have these so-called neurons that are connected by wires in several layers, and then you have an output layer at the end. You have multiple of these layers in the middle and so on, right? And, and there are many, many different types of uh, architectures that have been designed for these neural networks. Okay, so, so far, right, I haven't told you anything about what all these neurons are and what these wires are, uh, but we'll go through that in detail in, in the following many videos. And just to say that even though in these videos we're going to uh, focus on these very simple neural networks that look basically like the ones we see here at the bottom, there are many, many different types of, uh, of architectures of these neural nets that have been explored. And up here at the top is just a, a small snippet of different architectures that have been, been used before. Okay, so, so neural networks really form the basics of what's called deep learning. Uh, so, so maybe let's to just to take an application area where neural networks has really made a big difference. And this is in, in image recognition. So image recognition used to be a, a very hard task in computer science. In particular, it's maybe highlighted by this uh, comic strip from XKCD, uh, where you have two people talking here. And uh, one of them says, you know, uh, tells the developer, you know, when a user takes a photo, the app should check whether they're in a national park. And the developer says, sure, easy GIS lookup, give me a few hours, right? So this is an easy task to do. And then the, the supervisor says, okay, it should also check whether the photo is of a bird. And to which the researcher replies, I'll need a research team in five years. Okay, so, and then the caption is, in computer science, it can be hard to explain the difference between the easy and the virtually impossible. But I think what it really says here is that image recognition used to be a very hard task, basically because it's not easy to sit down as a programmer and just write a sequence of rules that determines whether what's on an image is a picture of a, of a bird or a cat or a dog and so on. Right? So it's a really hard uh, task, at least if you're just writing things down yourself. Okay, but fortunately, this is not really the case anymore, right? We have actually moved beyond this, uh, this depressing situation, and now we can actually do image recognition really well. So here's just an example of an image recognition uh, neural network that has been run on these different images, and it is meant to predict what's on the images, right? And as you can see here, it lists uh, in the output the five uh, things that it believes the most is on the picture. You can see these are really good predictions, right? So over here, it predicts it's a mite, and then the alternatives are black widow, cockroach, and tick. Uh, which are all kind of related at least to this one. And maybe a starfish is also not a completely ridiculous uh, prediction on, on this picture here. Here you can see that it's very certain that it's a container ship. It could also be a lifeboat and so on, right? A motor scooter and a leopard. Jaguar and cheetah being the, the next top candidates. So, so really one could say that we're now at a stage where we can actually do image recognition really well. And this is really due to uh, neural networks. So the, the really breakthrough happened uh, which in deep learning was in 2012 when the so-called AlexNet, which is a particular neural network that had been trained on the ImageNet data set. So this is, you can see a small snapshot of here. It's a whole lot of small images uh, with a lot of different uh, labels that you'd have to predict. And uh, before 2012, the best performing algorithms for this data set are, are learning models. I were really like just kind of like hard coded rules and things that were made by humans. And, and they achieved, you know, maybe around a 25% uh, mistakes on say the, the top five outputs that the, the chance that the actual image label is among the top five outputs. And then suddenly in 2012, I saw a huge improvement in, in performance, right? From more than 25% to almost down to 15% error. And this is when we started using deep neural networks for, for image recognition. And since then, it's just gone down, down, down. And actually already in 2015, uh, the best neural networks now on this image recognition data set, this image net set that we see over here on the right, they actually do better than humans on uh, identifying what's on these uh, images. Right, so, so they're actually doing really, really well. 
unfortunately, right, these images are, are kind of still made for uh, image recognition and, and uh, neural nets. So if you just go around with your camera and take pictures of uh, your surroundings, then humans are still better at predicting what's on the image than, than uh, these neural nets are. But, but still, they're doing amazing on, on these uh, image recognition tasks. OK. And what AlexNet is, is basically it's a neural network. Uh, it has 60 million parameters you can fine tune, right? So compare that to these linear models that we saw in the previous uh, videos, right? So as a, uh, one of these uh, logistic regression models, for instance, it has just one parameter per, uh, per feature of the input vectors. Here, this model has 60 million parameters, right? So it has tons and tons of, of parameters. Uh, much more than the number of input features. So even though these are images with a lot of pixels in them, they're still very small compared to, to the size of this neural network. So it has tons of parameters and they've been trained on a lot of data, right? So AlexNet in 2012 was trained on a, a million images. And we'll get back to in the later videos what all these uh, convolutions and so on, what they really are. Right? We'll, get, we'll get to explain what this type of feature, figure means. And since 2012, right, this has just exploded. So this is a maybe a semi-old uh, network that was trained in 2020. It, one of the state-of-the-art neural nets for image recognition in 2020 on the ImageNet dataset, this, this uh, neural network had 480 million parameters you could tune during training. And it was trained on more than 300 million extra images besides the ImageNet dataset, right? So it's just a giant uh, model to train. Right. And that's also what we saw in, in previous videos, right? If you have complicated models, you need lots of data. And you can really see here that you actually fed in a lot of data, 300 million images just to train this model. Right. So, so really data is key to using these uh, really large machine learning models. And this is also, I guess, one of the reasons why uh, it was not until 2012 that these deep neural networks, it's actually an old idea, but not until 2012 that they actually started improving over other techniques, basically because at 2012, the amount of data and the computing power just increased enough that it was feasible to train these large neural networks. Okay. So the basic idea in, in deep learning is it's a kind of like a machine learning model and um, somehow it learns uh, the data. It does learning in several uh, levels of abstraction, one could say, right? So it kind of just goes in, in several rounds of learning more and more advanced uh, features of the data, right? And this is really like to a lot of improvements that you've basically seen in your everyday life, probably in object uh, recognition and detection, speech recognition, natural language processing, reinforcement learning, and so on, right? So we've all seen self-driving cars, image recognition, playing games such as Go and StarCraft. All these are really things that have been made possible. The, the kind of performance we can get is made possible by these deep learning models, right? So the downside is really that to train these models, you, you really need a lot of data. And this is what has been only possible in the last, say, 10 years. And you also typically need really powerful computers like GPUs to even train these models, right? Because there's so many parameters and it takes such a long time to train them. Okay. And here's a figure from a good fellow that basically tries to explain the difference between these different types of, of learning and deep learning over here. So you could say here at the, at the bottom, right, you have classic ways of programming where there's just a program that sits down and writes every line of code. A uh, hand designed program that's supposed to just uh, take the input to the output. Classic machine learning, which was basically what we've seen so far, is that uh, you have your input, maybe you hand craft some features doing a feature transform first. Uh, what what will you as a programmer know? You sit down and decide on the feature transforms. And then you train uh, these, you, you train some mapping from these features to an output. Right. And then there's these two other categories called representation learning and deep learning. And the one that we maybe one can say that representation learning is, is really that you kind of learn some features first, and then you can train a machine a classic machine learning model mapping those features to outputs. Whereas in deep learning, it's more like you have several layers of learning more and more complicated features, right? So in some sense, you can think of it as it's kind of learning small, simple features on the data, more complicated features. And finally, you're mapping those complicated high level features to an output. And we'll also see later on uh, what we mean by this in more detail. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the question is, of course, how do we train these powerful neural networks? And the basic, the answer is, the short answer is, you already know the algorithm. The basic algorithm that's running all of this is mini-batch stochastic gradient descent. It's basically the main tool you need. Uh, plus, you know, if you want to do it really well in practice, 
Um, there's some fancy ways of doing uh, learning, controlling the learning rate in a, in a smart way and, and some tricks to avoid overfitting. Right? But all in all, at the bottom of things, it's just mini batch stochastic gradient descent that we're running. Right? So it's always just taking small steps in the negative direction of the gradient with respect to the model parameters. Right? This is a super simple algorithm to train something so powerful. The thing is just you need so much data uh, to make it work. Right. So basically, you know, by now, if you watched all the videos, you know all the tools you need actually to optimize one of those learning models. So, so what's coming up in the next couple of videos is uh, we'll look at more of these neural nets and see that they're actually like a non-linear hypothesis set. So they're different from these linear models we've seen. And we'll try to understand what a neural net is and how we can use it for supervised learning. And in particular, we're going to focus on the simple setup of what's called a feedforward neural net and see what that is. And then once we've introduced them, defined them, and shown how to evaluate them, uh, we'll uh, get into how we can actually train these models. Right? So, so that's what's coming up in the next many uh, videos.